We've talked about a number of reasons why the expression of emotions might be innate and evolutionarily important. The argument is that our brains are hardwired to want to pull certain faces, but that's not to say our culture can't influence it. In his neurocultural theory, Paul Ekman argues that there are cultures in which you actively inhibit what you might naturally do. For example, if you see something disgusting, you'll naturally pull a disgust expression. In some cultures, however, it's more appropriate to keep your disgust to yourself. In his experiments, Ekman showed videos to people all around the world. These videos were designed to elicit happiness, sadness and disgust. All around the world, people pulled similar faces in response to the videos. Then, in some of the experiments, the experimenter would say to the participant, Watch this video. While you're watching this video, there'll be people behind this one-way mirror watching you. So, you'll feel as though you're being watched while you watch the videos. There were certain cultural differences that were observed across cultures. Those in Japan, for example, were less likely to display disgust or anger. There's a prevailing display rule or cultural norm in Japan to not display negative emotions in public. This norm is probably not as strong as it was in the past, but it's still there. Emblems like come here, go away, this is how we communicate these from an Australian perspective or Western perspective. In many parts of the world, you flip it around. If you want to say come here in Latin America and parts of Southeast Asia, you put your palms down with the fingers below the palm. It looks a little bit like the shoe go away gesture that is sometimes used in the West. Now, that can cause a bit of miscommunication, can't it? Normally, people are pretty good at seeing the difference. They understand the cultural differences. For example, this is George Bush in the slide doing this gesture. The context here is that during a talk at Texas University, where this is their symbol, it's the Texas Longhorn gesture. It's a cattle that they're referencing. But in many parts of the world, that's got really insidious connotations. It means you worship the devil. What does this mean in other parts of the world? Well, in parts of Russia, I believe, this can kind of be an insult. It's like your wife is sleeping around on you. It means this in Italy as well. Actually, I don't know if people still do this anymore, but for a while in the 80s and 90s in rock concerts, people would be like, yeah, rock on! That was the rock on gesture because of a fleeting popularity of a satanic rock bands in the early 80s. So people were doing this as a satanic gesture. Then it just became a rock gesture. Anyway, no one seriously would think that George Bush is advocating Satanism. We can understand from the context. Sometimes we don't do this so well, right? This is Richard Nixon. He was an American president back in the 60s. He was famous for this gesture, which sometimes means peace, although in this case, he meant victory. These are two different connotations. Now, I'm not going to talk about that. I'm going to talk about when he went to Central America at a time when there was incredibly negative relations between the US and Central America. He was photographed everywhere doing this, which in the West is the AOK -okay gesture, a reassuring gesture. In many parts of Latin America, that's an incredibly offensive gesture. It's meant to refer to the female genitalia. It's a screw you kind of gesture. Now you can imagine the President of the United States splashed across the front pages of newspapers doing that. You can see that there's potential for miscommunication even with the most innocuous of gestures. In many parts of the world, that's the equivalent of pulling the finger or flipping the bird gestures.